Hello all. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to What is Healing? The exciting series done by yours truly. So from a naturopathic lens, concept number three in the What is Healing series would be this concept of holism. Ideally, healing needs to be holistic in nature. Um, this is happening in naturopathic medicine. Probably not happening so much. Okay, not happening much at all in conventional medicine. Now, through a reductionistic lens, it is good on the one hand that we're learning how to figure out what's happening at a cellular level, what happens with the cyclic A and P and, you know, all the different intracellular mechanisms and breaking things down to smaller and smaller and smaller parts. The problem is we've lost the balance in terms of putting things back together. We have a whole lot of reductionistic science and research going on. Itty bitty teeny, tiny bits of holistic science happening. And the problem is that the things that you learn in a reductionistic scenario, like what's happening inside the cell, or when this particular thing docks on a cell receptor, the problem is that that does not always translate to the whole, right? You have interrelationships amongst the various parts, bigger and bigger parts, from the cell to the tissue level, from the tissue level to the organ level, to the, from the organs and how they function inter, interrelated to each other, to the whole person, to even beyond the whole person, to that person in their, in their systems, in their family systems, in their communities, right? This health needs to expand. And so we have very few, um, very, very little research that's looking into how do we put the parts back together? With the exception, and if you're interested in this, you should check out Nora Bateson and the Bateson Institute in Stockholm, I think it is. I know she's in Sweden somewhere. And they're, they're looking, they're deliberately doing research that tries to look at the interrelational connections between things and how things behave in systems as opposed to just tiny little breaking things down into smaller and smaller mechanisms. So this is quite useful. Uh, we know this in naturopathic medicine that things do not always behave um, the same in those two different scenarios. Case in point in botanical medicine, right? Botanical medicine is really the study of herbs as a modality that is used in naturopathic medicine underneath the naturopathic umbrella. And really you can take an herb and you can, you can extract the active constituents meaning the their different um, constitu constituents and even molecules um, in in a plant and usually from a conventional standpoint i mean most of our pharmaceuticals come from plants that's the first you start with a plant and then they study the plant to figure out what are the active constituents and then they extract those and um, basically create a drug out of said constituent that then they theoretically understand it behaves exactly this way and we can measure the exact numbers of um, of the constituent in the drug that we're delivering to someone. Okay, that has its place, but what we see from a naturopathic botanical perspective is that how the plant behaves as a whole is different than how the constituents when, when extracted behave. You can take that, you can give someone the active constituents and you'll notice a certain effect. You can give someone the whole plant, the effect is different. 
you can give someone a tincture of various plants mixed together, different effect there, and in different in various individuals, right? So this makes it a little bit tricky. But all that to say, what we're seeing is, um, and what we've, I mean, we've known this for a while in naturopathic medicine, is that when you extract a, a small piece from the whole, you may observe on a, on a small level what happens, but you cannot necessarily make the jump that that applies to what happens when this thing is reintroduced into the system or other systems in general, right? It could almost be an opposite effect. And that therein is the rub. So ideally in medicine, treatment, healing proceeds holistically. In order to do that, we need holistic forms of treatment. Um, and those can be found in naturopathic medicine in general. We have treatments that are more holistic. Um, let me give you an example from my own practice in terms of how illness is often holistic. I had a patient last week, I think, um, who, uh, this is an adolescent male, fairly healthy, um, eats a pretty good diet, um, has a pretty good family system, you know, not a, not a lot of major stuff going on. But he started waking with stabbing pain in his abdomen that would keep him up at night. Um, so, you know, we start to look into this further and I asked the question, well, what happened before bed? Oh, well, huh. Before bed, he actually was irritated, maybe even to the point of being angry at something that happened, um, but largely suppressed his anger and then wakes up later with stabbing GI pain that makes him want to bend double um, and, you know, is keeping him up. He can't get back to sleep. Ideally, we need a treatment that's going to address these two components, something that's going to address the stabbing GI pain, what's going on in the GI tract, that is connected to the getting angry, but kind of in a suppressed sort of way before bed, not expressing said anger, and then waking up, right? The GI waking him up to say, hey, What's going on, <laughs> right? That's how I see it. Organs talk, guys. <laughs> Gotta listen to them. And so correlating and trying to figure out what is what is the connection is, is half the work, right? You've gotta figure out. Things don't happen in isolation. Very rarely do you have just random, oh, I'm getting GI pain and it's stabbing and it's, you know, waking me up at night. There's usually something else going on. So yeah, in this case, you know, we've got to address both components. We've got to, and thankfully there is such a medicine that ha happens to have those exact features that I told them to take and that, that helped. Um, but then the other piece is, I mean, we've also got to think beyond that. So not just stop at the, oh, he got angry before bed, didn't express it, and now he has his medicine. Even if that medicine has features that covers the anger piece, we gotta look beyond that. We gotta look back to, why does he not know how to express his, his emotions? Because this could come back again if we don't learn how to express our emotions in an appropriate way where we can communicate what we're feeling and try to connect those feelings to what is happening in our environment, what behaviors other people are, are engaging in that may be influencing how we are feeling. So we have to start to learn to, to start to observe what's going on. And that was the conversation we had. Holistic, right? Healing, ideally, 
is holistic and should proceed holistically. And in so doing, it's not as likely to be suppressive. Pretty hard to be suppressive if you're doing something holistic. Not so difficult to be a suppressive kind of treatment if you're just trying to address one little piece over here. You're going to push it down, but then as soon as you stop that medication, that drug, it's going to come back because you didn't really address the whole. That's why I say the whole thing needs to be holistic. Thanks for tuning in. Hang in there. Uh, audio.